Hello everyone, Kate Crane here from England, UK. I'm here as part of Carabelle's Creative Weekend. Today I'm going to share with you a tutorial for my loose and free colouring. Um, I've developed this kind of new technique through my love of watercolour and it's the opposite of kind of careful colouring and shading. It's a splash it on, make pools of colour, leave a little bit of daylight space in there. It's fast, it's easy, it's accessible to everybody and I think it looks absolutely great for your cards or your mixed media journal projects. I'm going to be using my latest um, designs. So I'll be using Fairy Town, Little People, Mechanicals, and Here We Go. I explain in the video everything that you need to, uh, to follow this technique. I hope you have a lot of fun playing along. Thank you for watching. In the last few months, partly as a result of just playing a lot more with watercolour in general, I've developed this much looser style of colouring, as you can see on these images here. I've spent years meticulously shading and colouring images, and I'm actually embracing this much looser way of colouring. And um, There's nothing not to like. It's fun, it's fast, and it's easy, it's accessible to everybody. Here are a few that I've already coloured. I like to cut out my images first. I have stamped these onto a regular card, so not a craft card, not watercolour paper, although you would get fantastic results on watercolour paper. This is on a card called Mondi Colour Copy. It's a standard um, stationery store kind of product. It's nice and smooth though, it's, it colours really nicely. Um, so I've cut out several already um, and you can see that rather than sticking to the lines, shading within the lines, I have literally built up pools of colour. So many of you have asked me for extra guidance on this, so I thought that's why I would do this little video for you today. Now here's a few things you might like to get ready first. Ultimately, this is how it looks when it's all pieced together as a card, on your journal pages, or whatever you decide to do with your images. But of course, it all starts like this. You might like to get a few images stamped and cut out ready. I like to always cut out with about a one millimeter border around the edge. Watercolors come in many, many shapes and sizes. So you might have something like this, a palette. You might have something like this. Color dot cards. Or you might have something slightly different that will still work just as well. Really anything water soluble. So these are ink tense blocks. They also come as pencils. You might have um, the range of scribble sticks. Anything that's water soluble. I like to paint in this slightly flat brush. It's a number eight. Um, anything really, as long as it's not too fine. The minute you have a fine point, you want to go in neatly and colour in the lines. So I tend to work on this fairly large flat brush. You also need something to add a bit of extra shading once it's dry. So something like, I've got a Blackwing pencil here, this is a matte dark pencil, or the Stabilo All pencil, uh, water soluble but goes on as a top layer for adding really nice dark shading. I also like to add highlights with a Posca paint pen. Now the colour wheel is handy, so this isn't essential that you have this, but I think it's really important to bear in mind. When we um, work in pools of watercolour, especially when they are wet, they tend to run into each other and merge. So if we think always in colour families, reds, oranges, yellows and pinks will all work together. Blues and greens will all work together. The minute we start crossing is when we make mud, unless we let it dry first. I'm deliberately going to ignore these lines. I don't want to colour this in stripes. I'm just going to start with a very watery yellow. And I'm adding just some little pools. And little dabs of orange on the top. If you want it to blend a little bit more I'm just grabbing a bit of uh, kitchen roll here, just so my brush doesn't get too wet. If you want it to blend a little bit more on those edges, now a clean brush, slightly damp, you can just tap it on the edges. 
you can just blend those edges in. Now I've gone from yellow to orange. If I want my colour to be even a bit stronger, I would now take that up to the next colour in that colour family, which is a red. Right. On the face, I'm not going to add any skin tone other than I would like it to have rosy cheeks. And for that, I'm starting with a very watered down red. So here, let me just show you in the palette. Here's the red, really, really watered down. You can always try it on your mat first. She's got very, very pale cheeks. I want to build up the colour a little bit, but not all over, so I'm going to leave most of it pale. Just build in a little bit at the sides. While I've got that colour on my brush, I'm going to colour in the heart. But I don't need to be too accurate. Remember, this is a very loose style of colouring. I quite like it if it's not inside the lines. As this is drying, it's already going lighter. This is where I would then go on with a little bit more. So this is now the darkest of those colours. I'm going back on with the red. She can have blue hair. And I'll give her blue shoes to match. If I want to add then a little bit of contrast colour in here, most of this is now dry, apart from those really new red bits there. Most of it's dry. Tiny bit of darker blue, same principle. And I'm going to leave her there. Now you can see how I've not coloured in the lines. I've got quite a few empty spaces of just plain white card with nothing on. I think that's fine and that works really nicely against bright colourful backgrounds because this gives you the white space that you need. I started with pools of yellow. I often start with yellow or something very light and work darker. It's really nice to see how it all starts to flow. Whilst watercolour is designed to do that, it is designed to create these, this flow and create these pools of colour. Something like the hair, I would keep his head, feet and his ears in something really neutral, like a very watered down grey and then a pop of brightness in that sweater.
Something I've enjoyed doing recently is colouring in this monochrome palette. So my mermaid here is mainly in tones of grey. I've added tiny pops of colour to her shells and her uh, little waistband there, but mostly she's done just in grey, even the skin tone. It works really nice against a coloured background then to keep your main image neutral. Of course, the more water you add, uh, the paler the colour. So I generally start with lots of water, less colour, and then I can build into it. So same kind of rules, pools of colour, leaving gaps, leaving white showing. Don't do the whole thing, just around the edges, and then with a wet, clean, just damp, not too wet, and just blend it in around the edge. And I would always look, skin tone always looks alarming until you get everything else in place. So with the body, just a very light grey, the same. And on top of the grey, for that skin tone, I'm going to add some, and this will just warm it up a little bit. I'm going back to the grey so that I can add some darker tones on the top. And with a clean damp brush just to work it through. And also remember it dries much lighter than it looks. I do find that adding this next layer of pencil is what gives these characters real depth. It really makes these colours pop by adding this very dark shading. Now I'm using a Stabilo oil. It's really important if you're using something like the Stabilo, which is water soluble, that these are dry. Because otherwise, as soon as you go on with this, it's going to turn to black ink. The alternative would be something like um, the Palomino. This is the, the black wing. This is a nice dark pencil, but it's not water soluble. So I suppose it's a safer option. When I design my stamps, I often put little tiny dots for shading. So that's a guide as to where you might add little extra touches of the shading. So that underneath the chin here, now I go on very light. You can always add more. It's much harder to take away. I don't worry too much about how much shading or where it goes. I do sort of find just a little bit just really helps.
I've taken it darker with the pencil, now I like to go on with my white pen. If you've got nice dark coloured cheeks, sometimes a tiny white dot in the middle just kind of brings it to life a bit. I'm just going to use a couple of these now to finish off as projects, just to show you how I might use these. I've gathered a few um, prints. What I quite like doing is doing a few random prints first of all, and then I can hold my images and see where they best fit. I get to see them against all these different colours. I quite like her against this green here, because it's got a bit of the pink in the background. So I think I might put my mermaid on here. But recently I've also been playing around with clean and simple, really nice clean white backgrounds because these colours really pop against that very clean background. I've got a few bits ready now to finish off my little project, so let me just talk you through this. I've got three pieces of plain white card as a topper, each one getting slightly smaller. I'm going to put her on the top and I've typed one little quote, simple word, it just says bonjour, and of course I am going to add some stitching. I do find when doing clean and simple, layering up with those 3D sticky fixes really helps to give it a little bit of depth. And here, I've cut two of my prints. One is slightly larger. I just really wanted the pink border to bring out the pink and also the pink on the mermaid. So I've layered those up to fit on the top there. And I've got two typed quotes there, just keep swimming. And these fabulous vines are by Birgit from Birgit's new collection. And they just kind of bring out the, the neutral here. I'm going to do a little bit of white pen doodling on the background and also some stitching to bring all that together. Final finishing touches, a bit of stickles. Now this is just in diamond, which is um, like a clear neutral. I do hope you've enjoyed watching and playing along with scribbly loose watercolours. They really can bring your images to life. Thank you so much for watching.